co-ops have been in existence since the 17th century. In fact, the first was set up in 1648 by Gerard Winstanley. Their ideal was to set up a community and grow their own food on common ground. They were ordinary working people who had fought for a change in the Civil War, but when they had achieved victory, they found their lot was unimproved. So they put down their swords and turned to work in the land, together for each other. They met with a lot of resistance, the military was sent in and they were forcibly disbanded. Their vision of peaceful cooperation has not died. It lives on today in the cooperative movement. The whole cooperative movement today is quite diverse. The main ones are housing co-ops, workers co-ops and consumer co-ops. This co-op is part of the consumer cooperative movement. It was started in 1844 by the Rochdale pioneers, who dissatisfied with the quality of their lives, got together and saved sixpence a week until they had enough to set up this little shop in Toad Lane, Rochdale, now a museum. This is a typical business structure. The boss sits at the top. He has the most power and gets the most money. Underneath him are his employees. But here, the workers are taking control. They have formed a workers' cooperative, which means they are organised differently and they share responsibility and money equally. Well, Don Lops notified us in, um, notified me in October of last year that they intended to close the installation down. Um, they, were, they were taking no further part in, in operating a latex installation to bring the latex in for the importer. And um, they offered it to other people in the, in the market of latex. The whole installation, they tried to sell it at first. And when there was no takers to buy it and buy the operatives here, um, then they tried to give it away to who were then their, their competitors in, in the latex industry and uh, there was no takers for that either. <laughs> 